Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. The World Health Organization estimates that 4% of Nigerians suffer from depression. Yet there is still considerable neglect of mental health in Nigeria, and those who visibly suffer from mental illness are lightly stigmatized. For example, individuals who show symptoms or psychosis, that is, hearing voices or seeing things that are not there, are often labeled as crazy, publicly beaten, and deprived of rights essential to dignified living. Individuals suffering from mental illness are generally seen as dangerous, regardless of their type or diagnosis of mental illness. As Nigeria prepares to join the rest of the world to mark the World Mental Health Day tomorrow, we have with us Professor Hope Egaga, the convener of Happy Soul Alliance, an NGO dedicated to raising awareness on mental health issues. Professor Egaga, welcome to The Morning Show. Thank you very much. Good uh, morning, sir. Thank you for joining morning. us today. Now, Hope, I know you as a professor <laughs> of English, <laughs> professor of literature, mm -hmm. yeah. dramatist, playwright. I mean, how did you just jump ship from literature to <laughs> Department of Psychiatry? <laughs> and you are now talking about mental health. How did you read this point? That's interesting. Um, First, let me acknowledge the fact that I'm not a professional. I'm not a psychiatrist, nor am I a psychologist. I got involved through uh, a personal experience. Um, the fact that I had to go through PTSD. Uh, That's post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. disorder. After I had the kidnap experience, I was kidnapped for 16 days and wow. um, blindfolded, uh, tortured, traumatized, all kinds of negative things were said to me, you know. At the time, I didn't really know the impact of those words and the experience. But when I came out, I started having some strange experiences. You know, you are walking, and it's as if somebody's pulling you back, as if you want to fall. Whenever I was in the car, because I was abducted in the car, whenever I sat in the car and we got to bombs, I would feel as if someone was going to shoot. I just said this wasn't right, and I went to see a psychologist. And then I went through therapy for four months. Um, it improved, but I still went ahead to see a psychiatrist to challenge the stigmatization which we have about going to see a psychiatrist. I mean, as a little boy growing up reading novels, I found people who went to see shrinks. You, know, so you, you, you talk to a psychiatrist. It doesn't mean you're mad. Mental health does not mean madness. That's one of the things which we have to address. So I went to see a psychiatrist, placed on some medication, and then I was OK. I then thought that level of ignorance which our people have has to be addressed. And having gone through it, not being a psychiatrist, if I spoke to the public to say, look, get involved. See what you can do. Now, when you have a, a psychological problem, that degenerates into a psychiatric one, people begin to keep their distance. As you said in your introduction, you are called mad. Oh, they refer to you, yaba left, aromental, all kinds of things. But you see, mental health has different levels from mild, moderate to severe. Quite a number of us go around with the mild wounds. Yes, we do. But for those who then degenerate to being psychotic, that is when people say it's mad. But it can be prevented. But the immediate reason I decided to get involved and set up an NGO was the case of Kmelumi, the young girl. I never knew her. No, before we go to that, yeah. you, you'll come back to it. Okay. Let's go back to your experience yeah. when you were kidnapped. Right. You said they said a lot of things to you. I think this was at the time when you were commissioner for higher yeah. education That's right. in Delta State. Yes. Uh, they probably kidnapped you because they thought you were a rich man. Yes. And uh, you had a lot of oil money in uh, your pocket. In fact, they asked for $100 million. <laughs> so uh, tell us you know, that experience. Share right. that experience with okay. us. It was in the morning. I had set out at about 8, 8 o'clock. I was going to Asaba for the National Day um, Service. Um, I had gone to bed very late, about 12, woke up around 3 a.m. Um, then I slept off in the car with my police orderly in front. Um, I got to a coup, 
Well, this won't mean anything to you now. But on the highway, and suddenly I heard this takato sounds of, gun, you know, gone. I was actually sleeping, and I woke up, and I said, what's this? When I raised my head, wow, there were three guys in front of the car with their guns held, positioned. Um, instinctively, I looked at the mobile policeman. He was gone. There was a gash on his neck. I don't know how they got him. Because we were inside a 2012 uh, SUV. They were in a Camry 2008. How they fired a shot past the driver and hit the policeman, I don't know. All right, that itself was traumatic, because when I saw that wound, I said, wow, where did this come from? And then they came, tried to open the door. I'm sure because of the shots they fired at the car, because when I came out, I think I counted about 11 um, bullet holes on the car. Wow. Yes, I found that the doors had jammed, so they couldn't open. They damaged the side um, window screen and then pulled me through the window. Of course, I sustained some cuts, you know. Um, they then held me, pushed me into their car, asked me to sit. Then somebody sat on my head for the duration of the journey, in other ways, so that the, so that the police would not see or whatever. But they were so confident and relaxed. You know, they were not in any hurry. They then took me to their hideout, which was a home, a country home. I was put in the room of a woman, and that was where my ordeal began. As soon as we got in, they tore off the, my, my inner vest and used it to blindfold me. And they left me for about uh, three days, four days. Sometimes they would come in. Um, the most traumatic of it was one of them who would come in with the butt of the gun hitting the ground. Your death hour is 10 o'clock. And I was wondering, how could a kidnapper be so poetic? Or I can laugh about it now, but it wasn't fun at the time, because I was asking myself, is it 10 in the morning today, 10 in the evening, 10 tomorrow, am I going to die? Your death hour is 10 o'clock. And we used the butt to hit the ground and he will leave. Of course, I couldn't see him. All right. Now, about the fourth or fifth day, the uh, guy called me and said, was I willing to part with $100 million? I said, I don't have. Dollars, not Naira. $100 million. million dollars. Wow. What? Oh, this, arrange, this kidnapping was arranged from Abuja. And if you can't pay that money, they've told us to kill you. you know, all kinds of funny things, you know. Um, so. Of course, they ask me stupid questions. How much do you people share every day in government? We don't share money. Oh, give me a slap. I use the, uh, the butt of the gun on my head. You know, ah, your wife doesn't want you to come out of this place. When they established contact with my wife. At that time, I knew my wife's phone number of by heart. I gave to them. Um, so of course, my wife is a very tough person. I'm very prayerful. She wasn't cowed at all. And they say, oh, your wife doesn't want you to come out so that when you die, she can marry someone else. You will see all kinds of things to belittle you, to reduce your personality. But that must have touched you. Right? Of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not really. I just no, my wife. that your wife will marry another man. No, no, no. I just <laughs> my wife, and I still do. Uh, you know, uh, we'll kill you. Um, and put your head on a stake along the highway. At any point, did you really think that you were going to die? Of were you, course, were you I sure thought. I said my last right? prayers three times. Wow. You know, um, all kinds. I don't know how such ideas come into their head. Um, we are going to place you in the river, your head above the water. We suspend you there, and mosquitoes will be biting you. Fish will be eating you until you die. They will be telling you such things. And you just picture that. Of course, that had a debilitating effect on my mind, you know? Um, as I said, for 16 days. But something happened. Um, they were reading social media comments. Former students of mine who were writing things, positive things about me. Um, then the students in the state demonstrated Lecturers in higher institutions threatened to go on strike if I wasn't released. Um, so that touched them, it got to them, and they came to me and said, oh, God, which kind of man you be? Uh, you are so popular. You are a good man. And I said, if I'm a good man, what am I doing here? You know? Um, that, they stopped beating me after that. 
they were giving me lectures on social relations. Mm. So it's these were not, you know, yeah. refresh. No, they, no. They, they sounded educated. Yes, they were giving me lectures and saying that uh, at the time the state government was going to ban the use of Okada in major cities. And they said, look, if you do that, how are we going to survive? One of them actually said to me, if I tell you my father's name in this state, you'll be surprised. Mm. He said so. They spoke good English. They smoked expensive, the high-class marijuana. How did you know the, you know the, the difference smell. between you know low-class? You, know you know the smell. <laughs> I do. Have, have, you, have you inhaled before? I'm sure I will, I will break down if I try that. But of course, <laughs> if you grew up in Delta State, uh, you schooled in Delta State, you schooled in Nigerian universities, you will know. All right. Um, a refined, not the type of crude one that you find around town. And they were so calm. So that affected me seriously. In fact, whenever I traveled outside the country after the experience, I was still nervous. I was scared of young boys. Mm -hmm. Anytime I saw a group of boys, I would think, are they coming for me? In fact, even in the beautiful environment provided by Dubai, once I saw an SUV with two boys, dark boys, black boys, they drove past my hotel, they went right, and then came back, said, are they looking for me? Oh, of course, you know that well, what you describe <laughs> is what one expert calls reactive depression. Yes. A lot of people uh, sometimes, when they lose a loved one, mm -hmm. when they go through a traumatic experience, or when they are broke, you know, um, <laughs> that's very common. That, that's why I agree with you, yeah. that a lot of people, poor people, go mm -hmm. in the battle with my de depression because they are broke. People react yes. to situations differently. differently. But this, this your own experience is really a scary one. So how did but you, you get talked out about, of it, about I want to know a certain okay. I want to know how he actually got out of the uh, Oh, okay. Situation. Oh, yes, as I said, I, I visited a psychologist, okay. clinical psychologist. Um, no, went on through. The, the kidnap. How, how did they release you? Did what, you pay how, ransom? What happened? Oh, yes, uh, we paid ransom. Oh, you had to pay? I'm not going to say that. Oh, we, wow. Who <laughs> paid? My wife raised the money. You did? My wife did. Okay. She raised so money they from had friends. To pay. It, wasn't, it, it had nothing to do with whether you're a good professor or a good man. Or no, no, no. They just wanted money. Uh, my friends, people in government, outside government, came with 500,000, yeah, a million there, and all of that. And then she put some money finally, but not a, even a tenth of what they asked for. Something very insignificant. So but how did you come about this NGO thing right. and the Pelumi oh, story? Yes, right. you see, um, you noticed that there has been. Um, a drama, you know, attached to suicide right now in Nigeria. It's as if it's becoming fashionable to take a dive, to take a jump from the Third Mainland Bridge into the lagoon, you know? Then I teach at the Unilag. Students routinely, so to speak, take their lives. Um, taking the notorious sniper. In fact, Unilag is thinking about banning it, banning the sale of it inside Unilag. You know, then there was this evening I was on social media. Sniper is the Sniper. poison for Yeah, for, for rats. insecticide, yes, for, rats, for rats and all of that, yes. So they just drink it and it, you know. Um, in fact, last week, a student also attempted to commit suicide because the GPA was very low. There was another student at Laduke at Kintala University who hanged himself. You know, it's, you know, so when I, it was below me, I saw this little girl, petite, smiling, you know, somebody looked cheerful. How old was she? Maybe 21, 22. Mm -hmm. She did an IT, I never knew her, as I said. She did an IT stuff with one of the um, radio stations. She looked to me like a happy person, and I said, why did this girl take her life? You know, somebody who appeared contented, liked in the environment, that means she was burning inside. She had a problem. And I said, look, I just talked to a few people, set up a WhatsApp group about the 30th of July. And because this I have, year this year, year, I had friends, I have friends uh, who are, some, well, um, I have about three in the UK, all of them ladies. I have a guy in America. I tried to reach them, and then we started discussing mental health. 
uh, and we set up a Facebook group, a Facebook group page. Um, at the moment, we have 7,100 members who contribute. We raise mental health awareness. Now, I then said, you, you, you won't believe this. We have received distress calls within two weeks from about five to seven persons across the country who are contemplating suicide. There was a day I posted something. Do you have suicidal thoughts? Do you think there is no need to continue to live? Reach us. I started getting messages. Because I'm not a professional, I didn't refer. And these professionals use their resources. They call from the UK. There was a guy we talked to, and um, he then reached me. Because he, when he contacted me, he said, look, I thought he was a happy person, a lab scientist. Uh, but he said, I, I, I don't think I want to continue. I, I, sometimes I think I should just take my life. Nothing is working out for me. I said, are you? And then they, consult, they, they called him. And then he reached me and said, it's as if 10 bags of cement were lifted off my chest. Just talking. Just by talking. Then there's another guy who is a band leader in church. You need to see him perform on Sunday. Oh, everybody loves him. He then said, he reached me. I need help. That I think of suicide all the time. What has taught me, I just think about my kids. And I say, if I die, what will happen to them? Then I started talking to him. He then, he then confessed that he had to go into stimulants. He was taking some drugs, hard drugs. What, what kind of counseling do you give them? Or is just this, you know, okay, I identify with you, I know what you are going through thing. Uh, do you have in your group professionals? We do. We do. Um, they, we counsel them, but you see there are some that require uh, medical intervention. Mm. That is the stage we have not reached. Yeah. Um, because we need, um, we need collaborators across the country. If I get a call from Kaduna, for instance, well, you could talk to some people. There was another one, a lady um, who called her, her, her nurse in the hospital where she was taking fertility treatment. She said, I had told you I was going to kill myself. I'm not going to do so. My husband is a terror. I will kill him first and then kill myself. Ah. Uh, and she said, but she refused to talk to us. She said she's in one of these big churches, and if it came to public, um, it would be embarrassing. So the next week we tried to reach her, she said it's resolved, that the husband gave her a ticket, she was not in Dubai. But the professionals amongst us said, no, it is a seed in her mind, and it will you know, regenerate. So that's the reason, you, you can see so many experiences uh, which we've had. Uh, but do you tell some of these people that you interact with? That suicide is a crime, it's a felony. You see? Uh, if you succeed, you are free. But if you don't succeed, you can be put through the legal process for trying to kill yourself and constitute a public <laughs> nuisance. That's one of the contradictions of uh, uh, the suicide, uh, the law's approach to suicide. Mm -hmm. A person who commits suicide has lost control of the mind. I was just going to state that fact, like how, do, why would they care about the law? Because yes. obviously they want to kill because themselves. Because usually, mm -hmm. yeah, if you don't succeed, they, you have they, a problem. They would rather go to jail too. They'd, I mean, they, they've, just, they've just lost their mind. We, I, I see, I, that's we, what I believe. We don't tell them yeah. that, uh, that they, they don't bring the law. The law doesn't matter to them. Mm -hmm. For most cases, is the end stage of the depression. Mm. And by the time they get to that point, nothing else matters. Mm. There was a case here in Lagos of a guy who went through, he became psychotic. Mm -hmm. He was admitted into the hospital. And um, he was suicidal. They put him in a special room quite all right. And he looked OK. A day to when he will be discharged, he hanged himself right there in the hospital. But you see, what, what is responsible for this, in your view? I know apart from being a professor of literature and uh, apart from uh, 
this NGO you are running now, you are also um, a public intellectual. Mm. What do you think is responsible? I mean, this wasn't the situation in Nigeria, say, a decade ago. But now we get to hear these stories, you know, uh, you're telling us almost on a daily basis. Yes, two things. Well, before now, suicide cases were underreported. Yeah, you know, it's a taboo mm -hmm. uh, to take your life. Um, one, the church will not give you a burial in Nigeria, you know. Then the community itself will not bury. The, 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 if you commit suicide in a community, back in our, in our villages, they throw the body into the evil forest. They don't, because that's a contaminated, contaminated body. But uh, at the other level, uh, the social pressure, pressure in society today, you know, you have to pay your rent, pay fees, uh, a lot of people have lost their jobs, you know, so there's this feeling of anger, or sadness, or frustration, you know. A lot of men <coughs> are challenged seriously at this time. So there's an increase in the number of persons who need psychiatric help. Okay, I want to ask, so the referral that you um, recommend for yes. these individuals, are these professionals here or they're overseas? There are some here. Okay. We and have some here. Where? But we see we have a problem right. which we have to deal with. I hope the professionals are there listening. I'm yes. told that in Nigeria, we have only 100 psychiatrists. Yes. I, I saw even, statistics. Or even less. Yes. Some of those psychiatrists, some have moved into politics. Yes. Some are mm. running as a local government chairman right. because, you know, politics is far more uh, <laughs> wow. uh, lucrative. <laughs> but, of but, let, let, but let me ask you. Yes. Some people say, for example, I mean, we're a very religious country. Mm -hmm. When you see somebody who is psychotic or maybe it's, uh, clinical depression, biological de depression, a reactive de depression, whatever form of depression it is. They say it's witchcraft. Mm. They say it's a home trouble, <laughs> you know, and you see that more people tend to go to churches, mosques, or they go to uh, abalis. Uh, the psychiatrists will tell you that the pastors are complicating the matters. Yes, I was going to ask, how, how much of a threat does that be? Yes, they talk about spiritual attack. Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> when somebody uh, suffers extreme mental depression, there's always, uh, well, maybe you did something, an abomination, so there is a reprisal attack. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you, there was a case in which you said, oh, he slept with someone else's wife, and that's the reason, or your ancestors, and then they take the, 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 the victim, the patient to a church, and he's tied, and then they start praying. Mm -hmm. They do all kinds of terrible things. Well, we are in Africa. We can't run away completely from that cultural belief system, cultural belief system. But for us in Hausa, we have adopted a scientific approach. Okay. In other words, once there is a mental breakdown, see a specialist. Okay, you were going there to is, touch on the professionals, right? Yes. You said there were about 100 professionals. Are yes, you hoping uh, that uh, they are listening? In the whole of Nigeria, 100, is that true? It's even less than that. Yeah, that yes, uh -huh. that in Lagos, we have only, in, in, only one clinical psychologist in the hospital. You see, psychiatry as a medical branch is not popular. In fact, your father would ask you, you mean you want to go and study mad people, That's when people are going point. into gynecology and, and all of that? Included, how, how much awareness is that in our curriculum? Like, what, what is the st statistics of that in our curriculum? Yeah, you know, we, we don't have, well, that's one of the problems we have. We don't have accurate statistics. But when we set the NGO up and it's fully running, we need to go into that, mm -hmm. get detailed information, mm -hmm. mental health advo advocacy. For instance, the state of New York uh, in America has just introduced mental health into the syllabus mm. from primary, from third year nursery. What's their level? What do they call it now? In other words, as a child, you are the way you are taught hygiene, you are also taught mental health. It's a serious problem in the Western world, and they have also vigorously um, challenged it, faced it, confronted it, which is not what we are doing here. All right, so. We believe that once we take off, as what, like what we're doing, you know, create awareness, let people know that there's this case, 
A student uh, missed the papers. I'm current head of the Department of English, missed her papers. Uh, and then the parents came to see me. And then they said, uh, just before exams, she was behaving one kind. I said, how? I sat them down. Uh, I said, you see, she was just talking. I said, all right. Then I called the girl. Before the exam, did you sleep? She said she didn't sleep well. Were you worried? Yes, I was disturbed. I said, OK, they took her to a church. They prayed. About after one month, I said she's OK. And I told the mother, told the parent, I said, it's not any spiritual attack. She broke down under the stress of exams. And it could come up again next exam. That's when you would then come to the conclusion, oh, anytime she wants to write an exam, uh, there's a spiritual attack. No. I want you to talk a bit more <laughs> yes. about stress. Okay. Stress induced depression. Yes. Because I mean in Nigeria we are all virtually uh, stressed out. Yeah. We're under stress. How how do you manage stress? Okay, now they will tell you that all of us need a level of stress to function. We all should develop the capacity to manage stress. Stress becomes a problem when we lack the capacity to manage it. Take, for instance, you may be going through financial difficulty. Your reaction to it will be different from the reaction by another person. You see yourself as worthless. You don't sleep. Gradually start talking to yourself. Some take to alcohol. Some take to drugs. But there's another person who says, who takes a religious view of it. This is a temporary thing. And then begins to seek support from other systems within the society. We do some of those things are broken down now. But so one person manages it better than the others. When you see a psychiatrist and you're talking about stress management, they'll tell you, OK, do you have some stress factors? Go write down some 20 items that you think disturb your mind. Oh, my car's broken down. My mother-in-law is giving me a problem. My wife nags. And the guy looks at you and says, but I also have these problems. I'm not reacting the way you're doing. All right. And then you go through counseling. Sometimes they also put you on medication. One problem which we also have to deal with is stigmatization. Mm. Um, people tend to believe that once you suffer a mental, bre mental breakdown, you can never be well. No. There are persons who have gone through life completely managing, successfully managing their health, the mental health. And you will never know. Some see psychiatrists once in a month, once in three months. There are some who know once it begins to come, the symptoms begin to come. They just go and see a psychiatrist I, I and they are treated. I need to clarify something. Yes. I mean, people who suffer from bipolar disorder, mm -hmm. schizophrenia, yeah. uh, sometimes it's biological depression. It's genetic. It's genetic. Something inherited. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you deal with such persons who yeah. are depressed for no reason, for no cause on their part, but just because they are who they are. The thing is biological. It's something in the DNA. Well, I'll leave that to specialists. But I know that psychiatrists have a way of dealing with them. Um, in other words, once that is properly diagnosed, you see a psychiatrist, they, they prescribe a course of treatment. And um, if they will tell you, once you know, once you are aware, once the patient is aware, the problem is half solved. Mm. Yes. If a patient knows that they are bipolar, all right, and they seek help, that's half, half solved. So they manage it throughout their lives. You don't have any control over that. Um, but stigmatization, superstition, are all big issues about mental health. Let me ask In you a personal Nigeria. question. Yes. You said if you saw, uh, what is that special car you said you were in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you were. Yeah. Unless you were, yeah. yes. You know, yeah. the, I mean, the car of a uh, big man, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said even in Dubai, if you saw an SUV, yes. you will start panicking. That's right. You know, sometimes when you are walking, you'll be hearing voices, yes. and you say, ah, have they come for me? Where are you now? Have you? You know, I will recover. Yes, yeah, that's the reason I can talk about it. Oh, wow. that's yes, that's the reason I can talk about it. And I felt, you see, a lot of people go through that kind of experience, and they never get help. They never seek help. They, in fact, they don't know that they need help. They simply say it's spiritual. 
Because these are things you can't explain. Mm -hmm. The kind of dreams mm -hmm. that you have, the kind of panic attacks, all right? Suddenly you think this place is going to, mm -hmm. you know, um, this place is going to open up and then right. consume you. All right, you are walking, or you, you look at somebody, ah, and then finally you begin to look at your mind. All right, so these are issues about mental health mm -hmm. um, that I thought, uh, we, we, we seek collaborators. Yeah. Programs like this. Tomorrow is um, World Mental World Health. Mental yes, health, right. I'm happy you are getting a, a specialist to come here to talk about it. It is a subject that we don't discuss. Mm -hmm. It is in the closet. We usually have when we have mentally challenged persons in our families, we hide them from public view. I've known of cases. Uh, there was a mother whose son developed. <laughs> became psychotic in England. Mm -hmm. She brought him back to the village and went back. How do you, how do you handle that? Mm. We, but we also realize that it is not easy to look after mentally depressed persons. Okay. It's not. Um, often, we don't realize that they are not in control of their mind. The mind is just like any other organ in the body. Mm -hmm. You can treat your lungs, you can treat kidney, you can treat malaria, so you can treat the mind. Okay. There are some very powerful antidepressants in the system, in the market, followed by therapy. We found that, that families are not able to manage them because you don't have time for yourself. Even for yourself, yes. Not there to is talk also of another, person. another person. There is also denial. Mm -hmm. We've dealt with cases where students who suffered a mental breakdown and the parents kept insisting, go to school, go to school. I called the mom and I said, this boy needs help. Okay. Take him away from here. So can I ask, where did you get help? Where did you say you got help from? And, and can you advise some of our viewers oh, on well, where they can um, get help? I, dealt, I met a psychologist in the Department of Psychology, University of Lagos. Here in Lagos, yes, okay. Yes, yes. I went to see her, mm -hmm. and she prescribed a four-month uh, uh, course of treatment with me. Then I saw a personal friend, Dr. Rutimi Koka, who is a consultant uh, psychiatrist at um, uh, LASUF. You, you, you see, we talk about stigmatization. Only recently, one of the big political guys around try to ridicule someone else yes, for was... seeking psychiatric help. Yes, this is a recent uh, governor and body, correct? <laughs> I'm not doing well, it's, it's, it's all over the news. Well, yes, uh, I mean, not like it. There will be another day to discuss politics with you. <laughs> you I know, mean, so, we'll but about... you see, it's part of the ignorance. Uh, you, you could have that. I mean, look at some high-class persons who committed suicide. Body, mm -hmm. for instance, of CNN, mm -hmm. traveled oh, to yes, France and then took his life. What was he going through? Well, Ope Gaga, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you almost touch on politics, and I know you can also discuss politics. Let me have wait. That will be another day, <laughs> another interview. Yes. Thank you very much for coming yeah. to the morning show. Thank you for having really me. Really interesting yes. session. Yes. An and I hope that many of our viewers will find all the things you have said very useful, very useful. and inspiring. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. It was quite I'm insightful grateful. to thank have you. you here. Thank you.